How are you guys? Good. How are you doing? We're good. good. We're good. So we've got some general questions for you guys, and then we wanted to play some One Chicago trivia. So uh, hope you guys are ready for that. We're going to have a little fun. <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah. So uh, first things first, you know, 2020 has been a really weird year. How do you guys feel about how your shows have risen to the challenges of portraying what's going on? I think our medical drama uh, had a unique opportunity and I think we're balancing COVID and what Chicago Med is, what the fans have come to expect of, of a Chicago Med episode really well. Um, it's honest and I think that's all you can, you can ask for. Yeah, I, you know, I think same for us. Uh, we're, we're doing our best to kind of keep to the reality of the moment and make sure that we're really recognizing the fact that we're living in a COVID world. Uh, and at the same time, um, we're really starting to figure out ways to uh, highlight the arguments of like, you know, social equity uh, and see how we can um, try and bring that story to the forefront a little bit more. So yeah, I, I do think that yeah, this post pandemic world is very much so reflected in what we're trying to make uh, happen on screen. Um, as for PD, I'd say that we have sort of the toughest job um, ahead of us, I think we're less focused on uh, the COVID world, which I think is fine. We're more focused on a, a world where George Floyd exists and, and um, presenting all of our characters in the aftermath of that. So I think that, that we really don't do COVID on our show and, and I'm kind of proud of where we're going. I still think we have room to go uh, different places, but if you've watched the first two episodes, Leroy's tackling uh, the blue wall of silence and Black Lives Matter. And I think we're having another character um, come in as well to sort of uh, contrast Leroy's uh, opinions. And so I'm, I'm excited. We have so much work to do, but we're trying. <laughs> Yeah, and kind of going off of that, I mean, I know personally, like, I've done a lot of reflection in 2020 just because of everything that's going on. Like, is there something that you guys have learned about yourselves do through all of this, like, personally, that you wouldn't have probably thought of or realized otherwise because of what we're going through this year? I needed to have a balance. As an actor, you don't necessarily, at the, at the end of the day, get to see the fruits of your labor. You don't mm -hmm. stand back and, and look at what you've what you've done. I've done a lot of uh, work with my hands, uh, home improvement stuff, and I I did not know how important it was to have that balance of being able to see a project you finish at the end of the day and how satisfying that is. And um, it's just a different side of the brain altogether. So I had a nice break from the creative side, and I will be continuing that balance in the future. Um, Joe Marina, it, any? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I think um, for me, it's sort of been I, along those lines. It's been uh, allowing myself to create, uh, to explore different creative outlets, right? Because we've been away from so much for so long. Uh, it's been interesting to like focus more on editing and writing and trying to kind of build out uh, a, a different creative outlet um, be, that you can kind of take on at home. Uh, and then in general, just, you know, like Marina said, you know, George Floyd exists, like and that moment is now a part of our lives forever. Uh, and it definitely uh, made me focus on my own brownness, uh, my own privilege uh, and what I have to do uh, as a brown man in this world with that privilege. So uh, I think, you know, moving forward, it's about trying to figure out how to best utilize what this world has given me in order to share that. Uh, for me, we were joking before, one of the things that I, um, I do is I like love to buy people presents and wrap them. And it's just part of my whole like milieu. <laughs> and I feel like in a time now where um, there is so much unemployment and so much poverty and, and um, hunger, it's really hard for me in this Chris period of Christmas to like just go buy something frivolous for someone that like might end up in the trash, <laughs> you know? And I'm, I'm mostly, and I'm, I'm not trying to like say, look at me, but because I am uh, have a job and, and have, have been employed for eight years, I'm in the lucky position of mostly giving, um, giving and donating this Christmas. Like just sort of, it's changed my whole outlook and the way 
um, you know, just seeing the, the, just the incredible amounts of people who are losing their job right now and aren't going to get it back for some time and just sort of focusing my economic attention in those areas. Gina, go ahead. Okay. So, um, Something that we're loving this year are the unscripted videos that Wolf Entertainment keeps putting out. Um, Marina and Nick, you guys have already done this one, so we're coming to Joe on this one. If you could pick anybody to do an unscripted with, who would you do it with? Christian Stolpe. I mean, that's easy. Like, I just, we have a rapport, and the man is, all I really have to do is just sit there and let him talk for <laughs> however long, because he's just so incredibly entertaining. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it, it, I don't know. I'd be open to doing it with anybody. Like, it's like, I think there's not anybody in any one of the shows that I wouldn't be interested in uh, having that kind of a conversation with. I did mine Is with, it, uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I, oh, I was going to say, because yeah, Nick, you did yours with, um, I, his name escapes me right now, but um, you guys had never done, you guys had never met before, right? Is that weird to have like a 20, 30 minute conversation with somebody you've never met? It was Peter Scanavino from Law and Order SVU. I had met him before, but nothing formal. It was mm -hmm. um, at, at the upfronts in New York, and we did a massive picture with with Dick um, there. And, and I remember running into him, but and at the after party, I think at that time. But no, it was uh, it, we actually got to know one another on the on the call, so it was kind of fun. It was like a first date, I guess you could call it. That's my idea of hell. Talking to someone for thirty minutes that I don't know is my idea of hell. <laughs> <laughs> Marina, you're good at it. No, no, no. I have like such anxiety and like, I just feel like so awkward. Like, oh God, oh, I hated dating. Oh, speaking of the real question is Nick, will there be a second date? I think the ball's in Peter's court. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to text him or are you going to wait? <laughs> um. I don't know. I already have no pressure, him, Nick. No yeah, pressure. No pressure. No. Honestly, I, 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 afterwards, I'm like, hey, next time you're in Chicago or I'm in New York, when we're allowed to hang again, I'd love to grab a beer. <laughs> he's, he was really, he's a good guy. Yeah, it was a good conversation. We had a lot in common, actually. Yeah, it's a good conversation. Um, yeah. I know that you guys haven't filmed that much ahead, but I'm curious, is there anything you guys could tease about what your characters are up to in the rest of the seeds, or at, at least in what you filmed so far? Is there anything you guys can tease? I guess for um, Burgess and Ruzik, someone is going to come between them in 805. And his name is Joe Cruz. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> like, scandal. There's a little bit of a double tease right there. Like, it's like... It's a female. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. A love... Wait, wait. Are we calling this a love triangle, perhaps? I was going to say... Oh, yeah. uh, I, you said a tease. You didn't say the whole, yeah. the whole thing. Is Burgess questioning her sexuality? Just see. Oh. 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 <laughs> you guys are taking something and running. I'm not saying anything. I just said someone will come between them. Um, I, for me, I can say that I look forward to spending a lot of time with uh, Herman and Cruz in an elevator. I mean, that's all that I want to say. Certainly, a, that's a tease. Exactly. We can run with that one if you want. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what floor do you guys usually hang out on? Oh, I mean, I'm always on the top floor. Uh, okay, and, uh, <laughs> hey, um, well, what, what we've set up on Med actually is Dr. Charles is going to continue chatting with each of the staff to see where they're at given the pandemic and mm -hmm. workload and personal life. So that, that's gonna continue on. Uh, for Will specifically, he's heading this clinical trial um, with, our, with a new character, a new doctor that's come onto the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, you, you're gonna see a new side of Will. He's reevaluating himself and um, he's gonna get into some trouble, I'm sure. Interesting. I wonder if his brother will be involved in any of that trouble. I hope so. 